quite hilarious. Um, so I guess Trump sat down with what Axios um, for an interview. Um, and he, you know, I think usually whenever the the Trump thing's weird in it because it gets a it's a bit boring talking about Trump in it because you know, you know everyone knows you know so I start talking about Boris Johnson here in the UK it gets a bit boring. We know it's a bit of an oof, or um, or a doof as they say in America. We know that right. So the best way to enact any kind of change is to get him out of office, right? You just kind of vote for whoever you want to replace him or you do your best to, you know, contribute to society and to local policy any way you can to make the change. But, you know, ranting and raving about it on Twitter, it's just, you know, it's it's mute and it's a bit of a wasted exercise. But it is funny to sort of look at him as just an entity to kind of just like look at and be like, just to kind of observe from afar and be like, wow, you actually made it. You actually achieved your goal and became president of the United States against all the odds. And every time we think you can't say something more insane, you always kind of outdo yourself, right? So on one side, you've got him interviewing. You, you've got him sitting down with uh, Dave Portnoy from Barstool Sports for a fairly entertaining interview. I thought he was really funny in that interview, uh, oddly enough. I think he came across pretty human. Um, for whatever you hear about him, especially when you read books about him, you always kind of assume Everything that you read in a book about Trump from somebody that doesn't like him always confirms the stuff that you already see, right? About how he acts, about how, um, you know, <laughs> about how he doesn't like to read and stuff. Like all these things that you read in books, you kind of get confirmed when you actually see him talk and communicate with others. But I thought the Barstool Sports interview did a good job because they, you know, they did a good job in kind of humanizing him in a way, right? He kind of made some jokes about him regretting sending out tweets and stuff. And, you know, he came across all right, don't get me wrong. Um, but this interview was interesting because he got to sit down with an actual journalist, like one of those kind of BBC, you know, Jeremy Paxman type ones, right? That actually is going to put pressure on you, ask you some, um, you know, some very, uh, uh, some very probing questions, questions that you can't get away with just, you know, doing that whole um, political fluff speak where you don't say nothing, you don't say yes on, if someone asks you, and they, there's, a, there's a tactic they always do, right? Whenever an interview asks them a yes on a question, they always sort of, Mm, skirt around it right they always kind of answer in general right they kind of lay both they lay both sides of the argument down and don't say anything at the end these sort of journalists will never let you get away with that so hearing trump trying to navigate that interview um and still try and do that thing where he kind of repeats things in the hope that the person will kind of just move on it's funny and also the bit where he kind of says hey you can't do that like as if like he's like a child right like when, whenever somebody pushes back at his argument or questions his point of view or basically says what you're talk, what you're saying is you know complete crap he's like hey you can't do that it's really really funny <laughs> i'll play a little bit of interview now <laughs> to watch but it's hilarious man it really is uh i believe you now I'd love to. We're going to look. Let's look. And if you look at death, yeah, curve, it started to go up again. One. Well, right here, the United States is lowest in. It's lowest. His voice is honestly. It's just he just even sounds dumb. That if that even is that even a thing? Can you even say that is that loud? He even sounds dumb, isn't it? It is. Uh, and imagine, right? United States, by all accounts, has failed completely with the coronavirus, right? They've, they've sort of not taken any lessons for anything that's happened in Southeast Asia or in Europe. They've just gone about it in their own way. Every state's got their own way of dealing with it. And collectively, they've done a terrible job. But still, you know, your, your, um, what you call it? your citizens are dying, mate. Do you know what I mean? There's a pandemic that's sweeping the entire nation of North America. And, you know, there's people that still don't believe it's a thing. They think it's a hoax. They're on the fence. They are making, you know, they believe in conspiracy theories. They are believing in alternative scientists, whatever it may be, right? There's no unified message or unified approach to dealing with it. And then, you know, in the face of that, you're bringing up, you're, you're taking papers with you with graphs and stuff and lines to prove your point. It's like, Mad guy. The numerous categories uh, were lower than the world. Lower than the lower world. Than <laughs> In what? Look, look. In what? Take a look. Right here. Here's case death. Oh, you're doing death as a proportion of cases. I'm talking about death as a proportion of population. That's where the US is really bad. It's even a weird stat to even do, isn't it? Why would you why would you have papers? with a stat that says death by cases and not death by population. I guess because you want to fub the numbers because that's essentially what's happening, but it's a weird thing to even kind of pin your hat on really because it's easily debunked. Well, much worse than South Korea, Germany, etc. You can't, you can't do that. You, have, <laughs> you, have to go by, you, you can't have do to that. Go by, <laughs> Let's go back again, I'm sorry. I'm talking about death as a proportion of population. 
That's where the US is really bad. Well, well, Much worse than South Korea, <laughs> Germany, etc. You can't, you can't do that. You have, to, find, you have to go by... You oh, he's a legend. By, he's an absolute will, legend, I swear. He really is a legend. Says, you have to go by the cases. The cases Why are not there. as a proportion when of population? When somebody... What it says is when you have somebody that yeah. has... It, where there's a case... Oh, OK. The people that live sure. from oh. those cases. It's surely a relevant statistic to say if the US has X population and X percentage of death of that population no, versus South Korea. No, you have to Korea. go by the cases. Well, look at South Korea, if, for example. 51 million population, 300 deaths. It's like, it's you, crazy. You don't know that. I do. It's you on the, don't know don't, that. You think they're faking their statistics? Uh, South Korea? I, I won't get into country? that because I have a very good relationship yeah. with the country. But you don't know that. And He's the best. He really is the best, man. It's just insane to believe that somebody like that has made it as president. But it's also interesting to think that there's people out there that will watch that. Because that, that's the thing that's interesting about living nowadays, right? Especially with the pandemic. There's just so many different points of view about something that's quite clearly... Um, I will say clearly, kind of to, to this, quite clearly, quite easy to understand. It's not easy to understand because you know we haven't figured out a vaccine, but it's interesting to think that there's so many people who have so many different views and opinions about what's actually happening with the pandemic and how we're dealing with it, what the right approach is to kind of eradicate it and for us to get back to normal, quote unquote. It's interesting that I think just that fact that you know line up ten different people random people and they're all going to give you a different interpretation of what the issue is and what's to blame and how to deal with it and there's no unified approach no one's sort of like all blanketly agreeing about wearing masks we're not all blankly agreeing about you know physically distancing we don't all blankly agree that you know we should stay indoors or you know avoid crowded places everyone's got a different idea about what how bad it is um and how to deal with it and also there's people out there who legit will look at that interview and think oh he's been stuck up oh he's been you know dead they're trying to make him look dumber than what he is. Oh, it's the MSN media, right? The fake news. Da, 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 da. It's like, no, nah, objectively, you can't look at that as a fan of it and say, that's a bit of a car crash interview, really, isn't it? He came into there woefully unprepared. He looked like he just, even those printouts, he looked like he didn't really know anything about those printouts prior to handing them to the actual interviewee. He wasn't really speaking with any kind of conviction, right? He's sort of like, you know, when you, you know, when you're in a group in class and you have to contribute something, but then you don't really want to contribute anything and you have to, and then you forget you have to present it and then you have to kind of fluff you have to kind of then present your part as if like you did the work but you know you didn't do the work and you're kind of reading the screen as you're talking but you're actually reading reading it because you don't know what the screen says that's what he's sort of doing he didn't do the homework innit? it oh what a psychopath man really is